Hi everyone and welcome to Moonstone Makes. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 126 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so happy you stopped by and if you're a returning viewer, a big welcome back. Today is a cold and cloudy Monday in November here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. And if you're looking for show notes for this episode, you can find them in the description box below. I liked the link to everything that I talk about. And thanks again for being here. This is my YouTube channel where I like to talk about things like knitting and spinning and other fun new crafty things that I have been getting up to, which I'll talk a little bit about later because there have been some new things. One new thing. There's one new thing. Okay, so what do I have? Um, I guess there's no announcements or anything. It's December. Will I do Vlogmas? Will I do Vlogmas? I don't know. I want to, but I don't know if it'll happen. We'll see. Usually how it goes is on December 1st, I'll get the bug and just do it. Or if I don't do it, then I'll never do it. So we'll see. <laughs> but I am very excited about Vlogmas. That is where um, people on YouTube make uh, vlog style videos, kind of like day in the life videos, which if you've been around for a while, you know, I really like doing. Um, but the challenge is that uh, you do one a day throughout the month of December leading up to Christmas. And or uh, there's like lots of variations. But I thought I heard my baby, but I didn't. He's asleep. Um, I really like doing Vlogmas, so we'll see if it happens this year. I did get an advent calendar. It's not a yarn one, but it is from someone yarny, and I'll talk about that at the end in acquisitions. Anyway, let's talk about some knitting. I am wearing a finished object, and I'm very excited about it. This is my, I almost said the name of my next whip that I'm working on. This isn't that. This is the Daily Ritual Raglan by Park Williams, and I knit this using my hand-dyed yarn, which is Moonstone Dye Works, in the Artemis colorway, and this garment is knit holding two yarns together, a fingering weight, and a lace weight. I used my Yak Sock base and my Alpaca Silk, my Surrey Alpaca Silk base. That's the lace weight. The Yak is the fingering weight. And I love how it came out. I'm really excited about it. So it's a top down. Am I just saying that out of force of habit or was it bottom up? It was top down. This is a top down raglan pullover with a turtleneck and it's great. I knit the uh, second to smallest size. I don't know what she calls it in the pattern, but this is it. It's um, got 10, inch of, 10 inches of positive ease for me. I'm a 32 inch bust and the second size was for a 42 inch garment. So it's 10 inches of positive ease which is quite a bit more positive ease than I tend to knit and I like it. I think I like it. <laughs> I really like how deep the armhole is. Um, I kind of like that like little, you know, the bat wingy thing you get with that. Um, the sleeves are knit like with decreases and they're a little longer which I like and it's made to be cropped and it kind of for me this is cropped like my waist is up here so it's not like super cropped but that's where it hits I'm wearing jeans that never happens <laughs> but I think with something like this that's kind of like the outfit that I would want to wear this with is jeans um, and I don't like to wear jeans that often so we'll see but um, yeah I didn't make any modifications to this pattern which is a little unusual for me and I like how it came out I love the color um, I really do let me give you a little turnaround too so that's the front that's the back And that is what it looks like. 
This was very fun to make. I worked on it quite a lot because I really wanted to get it done. And so I was a little bit monogamous on this and I've worked on it for a pretty long time. And I'm really happy with it. I like it a lot. <laughs> this was my first time working with both of these bases for my shop. They're both new bases. Uh, the Yak Fingering is amazing and I love it and it's absolutely beautiful. It's kind of like my favorite new base. And the Surrey Alpaca Silk Lace Weight Base is really nice. I like it quite a bit. Um, I think it's going to be my go-to choice from now on for as like a silk mohair lace weight alternative. Um, I like it better. It's, I, I don't know. I like it a lot. The feel of it is a little... I don't know how to describe it and why it's better, but it feels a little better to me. Like I like the feel of it more than the mohair silk. And it's like, it's like less super soft. You know what I mean? It doesn't have that like, like super slick, buttery, super soft feeling that the mohair has. Um, it's a little more like fluffy soft than like silky soft or something like that. I don't know what I'm trying to say. And I like that better. Uh, I also find that it doesn't shed as much as I'm knitting with it, which is a huge plus for me. And I like it a lot. Uh, this sweater took, let's see, three skeins of the fingering weight and two skeins of the mohair. I think, yeah, I think that's how it worked out. Or maybe it was the other way around. I forgot. I did not alternate skeins. Um, and I just never do. I like never do. I'm not into it. <laughs> um, and the color lots do differ a little bit because as you can see from like here down, there's like some black spotting, which there isn't up here. And that's because this second skein that I used was kind of like a misfit. <laughs> I dyed this colorway and this particular skein of the mohair had some black spots on it that weren't supposed to be there just where because there's black dye in this colorway and it's just kind of a spot where the black dye didn't uh dissipate enough so that when the yarn hit it it just had a black splotch on it that wasn't supposed to be here there so instead of selling it I kept it for myself <laughs> and that does come out here but that's okay and yeah I think other than that it turned out totally fine and I really like it um can you tell I'm leading up to something? <laughs> I really enjoyed working on this pullover and I really like how it came out. Um, but really, I don't think I'm going to wear it that much. So um, I have this thing where I hate keeping things around that I don't use. And I know I haven't had this that long, but I'm pretty, I have pretty much made the decision to pass it along. <laughs> So uh, what I think I'm going to do is pretty much de-stash this sweater. And it got me thinking, like I made it and I wore it a couple times. And while I really love it, like I love so much about this sweater and I'm really happy I made it. Um, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel, I don't feel like myself in it, I guess, is kind of the way to put it. So... Uh, I got to thinking that I wanted to get it. I wanted to give it to somebody else who might actually wear it. So I want to de-stash this. And that got me thinking about other sweaters in my wardrobe that I've made that I don't ever wear. And that got me thinking about shawls that I don't ever wear. And I've done this before. Maybe last year I did... Um, like a de-stash where I just gave away a bunch of my knitwear, including sweaters and shawls, on Instagram through stories. Um, and I decided I want to do that again. So that is to, all is to say I'm going to do that. Um, but I'm going to do it different this time. Instagram was a little tough because it was just a little chaotic because I did it in the stories and that was just like a little chaotic. But I think what I'm going to do with this sweater and with a couple of other things is list them in my shop. So I have Moonstone Dye Works is my shop, moonstonedyeworks.com. 
and uh, I'm going to list these as products and I'm going to ask for uh, pretty much, I think what I've decided is $5 per thing kind of, because I don't want to like, I don't want to like sell these things. I want to like give them away mostly. <laughs> so what I'm going to do though is ask for $5 per thing. And that's kind of just for like the time that it's going to take to list things, to photograph things. I'm going to wash everything before I send it out and for shipping it out, just all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> plus you have to list it for something in the shop. Um, so I'm going to ask $5 and then plus shipping. Um, so you would pay shipping. So if you want this sweater, <laughs> it's a 42 inch bust and it's knit to pattern. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to do it yet. It's probably going to be this next weekend, maybe this week. I don't know. I'll put it up on Instagram probably. So if you don't follow me on Instagram and you want to check that out, uh, go over there. Dynamite True Hero on Instagram. Um, yeah. So sorry. I'm like really waffly right now because I haven't actually like thought all this through to the very end yet. I'm kind of just doing it here. So anyway, that's the plan. I'm going to give this sweater away. I just don't, I know I'm not going to wear it. It's beautiful and lovely, and I really love it. I love the color on me. <laughs> Is that arrogant? I really like this color on me. Um, but And I like it, I really like it from here up. Like, I feel like from here up, this is, like, perfect. Like, I love this. I don't know. Something about the body, though. I, you know, I've talked about this before. I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone of, like, tunic length things. I just love that length. And I was trying to do that with this, but, um, I just don't, I just don't, I just don't think I can do it. Not in general. I'm going to keep trying it and maybe I'll just keep giving my garments away. But with this, this is, this is just not the one. Okay. This is just not the one. So it's going to be somebody else's. Um, so yeah, it's going to be up on my shop at moonstonedowrics.com. It's going to be sometime this week or this weekend. And I'm going to give you a heads up on Instagram and I'll put all the information for everything I'm de-stashing in the listing. And I've got a bunch of stuff. I've already, actually the pile's right over here. I don't want to like go through a whole thing. Should I? I don't think I'm going to, but I've got my Ursa, which is also knit out of Moonstone Dye Works. My Weekender I'm going to get rid of. Um, a bunch of shawls, my scrappy scarf that I made where it was by Summer Lee, the pattern. Uh, that's going to somebody, um, what else is over there? Oh, the Marled Magic, my Marled Magic shawl. I think it's the Marled Magic or is it the Marled Mania? I don't remember. I knit both the Marled Magic and the Marled Mania, which was a cardigan and a shawl. And I've already given away the sweater. <laughs> I gave it to somebody else like a year or two ago. Um, and now I'm giving away the shawl. Which is like one of my favorite things I've ever knit. It was so much fun, but I don't ever wear it. And I'm just that kind of person. I'm not sentimental about stuff in that way. I just like, if I'm not using it, like I just want to get rid of it. Okay, I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show you. This is not what this podcast was supposed to be. I'm going to do this super quick. Okay, so I am going to pass along to whoever wants it, and I guess whoever gets there first, my Flora Cardi. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about everything, so I'm going to put all the details in the listing and also probably link to my Ravelry pages. So the Flora Cardi, this is a linen short sleeve cardigan. Out of here. My Weekender. Out of here. And I love all this stuff. Like all this stuff is amazing and beautiful, and I totally love it. I just don't wear it. I don't use it. My, whatever this is, the Jessie May thing. What's this called? I don't know. This is a Jessie May pattern. It's a V-neck crop thing. That's going. My Just Feel Festive crochet shawl. Absolutely beautiful. Super fun, scrappy project. I just don't wear it. This, I don't even know what this is. This is like the second thing that I ever knit when I like really started knitting and I like got stuff from like an actual yarn shop. This is ancient, but it's in amazing shape. I don't even know what the yarn is. I don't even think it's on Ravelry, but it's really beautiful. I know it's silk and wool 
and it came from like my local yarn shop which is no longer in business and it was like a sample <laughs> and I really liked it and I was like I'm gonna knit that because I'm a brand new knitter and I need that kind of like structure somebody telling me what to do so I bought the yarn there I bought the pattern and I knit it and it's awesome don't know what pattern it is though this is another cowl that I knit a long time ago I forget what yarn it is but I have it in my Ravelry page it's like oh it's Swan's Island it's Swan's Island Merino Worsted and it's cabled and it's a really long cowl. Used to wear it all the time, don't wear it anymore. This is a tank top that I saw a sample of at Stitches 2020, right before the pandemic, my very last fiber festival I went to. This was a sample in a booth and I wanted it, so I bought the yarn for it and I made it. It's tank top, don't wear it. Never, ever once have I worn it. This is the Ramona cardigan, also knit with some yarn from Barrett Woolco that I got from Stitches 2019. Yep, gone. <laughs> Such a dork. My Ursa pullover. This is Moonstone Dye Works as well. This is DK Weight Held Double. And if you want to take these things home with you to just unravel them and use the yarn, you can do that. I don't care. Um, yeah, don't wear it. I love it. I just don't ever wear it. This awesome scarf. This is um, Summer Lee's scrappy scarf. I think it's like a worsted weight and a fingering weight held together all throughout. This was so much fun in it, but I don't wear it. And I think the piece de resistance, that was terrible. <laughs> I'm gonna edit that out, I'm not gonna. Um, my marled whatever it is. Stephen West knit along shawl. I didn't do it as the mystery knit along, but I did it later and I like love this thing. It's amazing, but I don't ever wear it. So I want someone to have it. Who wants it? Who's willing to pay for shipping and $5. Okay, sorry. That was a whole unnecessary sidetrack. Um, if you were interested in that, sorry. Maybe I'll put a timestamp at the beginning to skip if you want to. I don't know. I don't know if I'll do that. But anyway, if you're interested in any of that stuff, I want it to be yours. Because I, while I love it, and I knit a lot of love into all that stuff, and I still have a lot of love for all that stuff, I don't use it. And I can't, I can't get, I just can't, I just can't. Okay, let's move on. Let's take a drink of water and then move on. Two works in progress because I have some. <sighs> so I'm gonna knit something else out of this yarn, I think, in this colorway. I think it, I don't know. Let's, I think it needs to be, okay, I'm gonna stop talking about that. <laughs> I'm moving on. <sighs> Was there anything else I needed to say? I don't think so. Okay, works in progress. My first one is living in my woodsy and wild bag and this is the work in progress that you have not seen yet I'm pretty sure um it's the be thankful cardigan and this is what it looks like so far I am knitting this uh along with Maria from Woolen Forest who is hosting a make along and knit along for this pattern and I had been eyeing this pattern and this yarn ever since I saw Tierra of the Love Stitch Knits podcast do it. <laughs> she made the Be Thankful cardigan in the same yarn, which is Barocco Mochi, in a different colorway, which was a really beautiful, like creamy white with like colored speckles. Really, really pretty. I saw her make it and I really loved it. And then I realized that I had seen it before and it was Candace, who was transitory on Instagram. She made one in Brokomochi. And then Maria from the Woolen Forest on her podcast with her husband, Michael, that they call, I think they call it Knit Two Together. She announced that she was doing a knit along for this pattern and that she was using Brokomochi. And so I'm like, oh, and also <laughs> like the day before she announced the make along, I had gone to my local yarn shop and saw that they had this yarn there and I touched it and saw it in person and I almost bought it for this pattern and then the next day she said she was doing a make long and she was using this yarn I was like okay okay fine I will do it so <laughs> I'm making the be thankful cardigan in Barocco mochi 
in the, I think it's the aubergine colorway. It doesn't actually say on the tag. And I bought it in person at my local yarn shop, so there was no like listing or anything. But this is what this yarn looks like. And it's very beautiful. So it's a really dark purple. It's, I think like, so it's like a nylon tube, right? Like a mesh nylon tube, it's that kind of yarn. And blown through it is alpaca, fine wool. Oh, mer okay. It's written weird. Baby alpaca, fine merino wool, and 2% other fiber. Okay, oh my goodness. Let me just, let me just start over. It's 37% alpaca, baby. That's how it says it on the tag. 35% nylon, 26% wool, fine merino, and 2% other fiber. So I think the nylon is um, a mesh tube, and I think in my yarn it's black. And then blown through that is are all the other fibers, and one of those is purple. And it's got neps, or I don't know if that's the right word for them, but it's got like tweedy color bits. My favorite out of the hot pink ones, obviously. They also had a black colorway, and it was really torn between the purple and the black. Maria's using the black, and I really wanted the black. I really, really love black clothing. It's like all I wear, and I really love black knitwear. Um, Kat from, oh, what is her podcast called? I'm lame. Heather and Hops. <laughs> Kat from the Heather and Hops podcast recently put out an episode where like everything she showed, all of her knit stuff, was all in black yarn, and I was like, goals. Anyway, I went with the purple. I really like it. I bought five skein, five balls, and I'm on my second. And here is what I have so far. So this is a bottom up V-neck and can I remember anything? My brain doesn't work anymore. So there's that. Set in sleeves. <laughs> it's bottom up, v-neck, set in sleeves. It's a cardigan. And this is what I have so far. I am modifying it to make it longer. Uh, so the pattern is like a waist length cardigan. And how the shaping goes is you cast on, do the ribbing, and then you just start increasing. So it's kind of like this shape where the whole body shaping is just all like this. Um, I decided that I wanted it to be a long cardigan instead of like that kind of mid-length cardigan. So I want it to come down just past my butt. To me, that is the perfect length for top, cardigan, pullover, everything. I love that length. I wear mostly leggings and to me that's just like, it's my style. You know, so I'm adding 10 inches of length to this thing and I'm um, making up my own body shaping kind of. So let me just show you the yarn real quick so you can see how cool it is. Isn't it lovely? It's really fluffy and really fuzzy and really like tweety and I really like it. So... I cast on for, okay, so the pattern calls for like a triangle, right? You cast on, you increase out. I wanted to make it longer, but I wanted to keep some body shaping. So what I did is I took the number that you increase to, like right before you split for the arms, and I cast on that number. And I changed the ribbing as well. I did a two by two ribbing, and the pattern calls for some kind of different ribbing, that I think involves twisted stitches, but I don't do that. So I did a two by two ribbing and then I increase, I'm sorry, I was, I was, I was about to say, I increased down. <laughs> I decreased from there. Um, I just kind of took the rate of increases that the pattern calls for and I flipped it to be my decreases. Um, and I decreased down and then I knit straight for a little while and then I just followed the pattern from there for the increases and made sure that I added 10 inches of length to the pattern. So that's what I did, and I'm pretty much at the point now where I just have a little bit more knitting to do before I split for the sleeves. So the pattern really calls for it to only be that long at this point, but I pretty much doubled it. 
So there is a little detail here. It's like a little mock seam with uh, a pearl detail and also a slip stitch detail, which you actually can't really see the slip stitch detail in this yarn because the yarn is so fuzzy and also it's dark. But like this stitch running up here, that column is all slip stitches. Maybe you can see it. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. No one is ever, ever going to be able to tell that that detail's there when I'm actually wearing it. Um, but I did it. And I am knitting this on a US size 9? Is this a 9? It's a 9. I'm using my Lika Minis on my Knit Picks cables because that's my preferred setup. I did not swatch for this either. <laughs> and this yarn I think is a little bit different than the yarn called for. So I probably should have swatched, but I didn't. And I don't care. Um, it's like an Aran weight, I think. I think it's called an Aran weight. The pattern calls for an Aran weight, but this is really like a different construction than, you know, a regular plied yarn. But I like the fabric I'm getting. I haven't blocked it. I thought at this point I would have like soaked it and let it dry and at least measured my gauge, you know, post blocking and see how the fabric like changes after blocking. I have not done any of that. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to. I might just go and do the whole thing and see how it comes out. I'm sure it'll be fine. And hey, if it's not, if I don't like it, I will give it to somebody. <laughs> so, yeah, this is what I have so far. I'm on my second ball. Um, I bought the amount of yarn that the pattern like calls for for the size that I'm making. For this, I'm making the smallest size. And I think the smallest size is like, I don't know, something like a 34 or 35 inch bust or something. And I'm realizing too that I think my ideal ease is like three inches of positive ease. I think that's my ideal. I mean, obviously it depends on the garment, the style and everything too. But, oh, 40 inches. The smallest size is a 40 inch bust. But anyway, that's what I'm making. Oh, so I was talking about the yarn. I bought enough yarn for the pattern as written. Now I'm adding 10 inches. Obviously I'm gonna need more yarn. Uh, when I bought the yarn, I didn't, I hadn't like decided that I was gonna add that length at that time. And when I came home and decided that I wanted to do that and I cast it on, I was like, it's okay, I'll just buy more yarn. My yarn shop is out of that yarn. I bought the last of it. They only have five balls. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go online and find another I'm guessing another single ball, maybe two, I don't know, we'll see. But that's a little bit of a bummer because that means that's like extra into like shipping and stuff. And I looked on Ravelry D-Stash, nobody's D-Stashing this colorway. But that's okay, I'll figure it out. I'll probably get it from Webs. we'll see. Oh, that's what the tag looks like, by the way. So I'm really enjoying this project. This is what it looks like when you get to the end of a ball. I'm knitting from the outside, but it still has this big hole in the center. This yarn's great. I am loving it. And that's pretty much that. It's been pretty simple so far. Soon I will start doing some interesting construction elements like sleeves and attaching and all that jazz. I think it'll be fun. I'm enjoying it. So that's my first work in progress. And my next work in progress is living in this project bag from This Handmade Life. Um, I have two pairs of socks in here. Let me get everything out. Uh, the first that I'll show you is the one that you've seen before. And it's these socks. So this is some yarn called Feederbrook, Feederbrook Farm. It's the Entropy DK in the oxidation colorway. And this is a DK weight yarn. It's wool. Oh, it's Blue Face Lester. It's 100% BFL. It is not superwash and there is no nylon in it. But that is um, something that I'm fine with, with socks. I, I'm cool with both of those things. 
Uh, and I really, really love it. Here's the yarn. It's this kind of yarn where it's dyed in the wool and then spun so that the colors kind of, they barber pull is what it does. And it's really pretty. I'm really enjoying these socks. Um, it's a DK weight sock, so I'm using a US size three. These are my high, high, sharp interchangeables. I do magic loop for socks. And what I did is I cast on, I forgot what I cast on, but I have notes. Man, I'm not together. I'm not with it for today's episode. Half of 48 is 24. I need 46, 44, 22. Let me count. Two, four, six, seven, okay. I cast on 52 stitches, did a one by one ribbing for the cuff, and then threw out the leg from like here to here, I'd say. I decreased down two stitches at a time. Um, one on either side, and I decrease down to 44 stitches. So that's at the that's the stitch count that I'm at right now, and that's the stitch count that I'll stay at. And this is a pretty long sock. I like to do that. I like to make longer socks. This will come up like uh, not quite to my knee, but a couple inches below my knee, and I'll cast on a larger stitch count and then decrease down throughout the leg. And that way, when I'm at the bottom of the leg, I'm at like my normal stitch count so that they're nice and like they come up high but they're not like super tight you know what I mean they're not I don't know they're tight where they're supposed to be and not tight where they're not supposed to be and I'm really really enjoying these I love how the colors are coming out these are such fun socks to me I'm doing a heel flapping gusset right now so that's my heel flap it's a slip stitch heel flap and I've gotten to the point where I'm about to do my heel turn I just haven't done it yet so once I do that, I'll be on my way to the foot, and these will be good. Those are my DK weight socks. My next whip is um, another pair of socks that I am reinventing. So uh, pardon my super old, super worn socks, but this is a pair of knee-high socks that I knit a while ago out of some hand spun. So this was Moon Rover Fiber Hand Spun, and I knit really long knee-high socks, and they have, this was a while ago, like I've been wearing these socks for a long time, and they have since uh, felted to the point where they are too small. So if you can see, the leg is very skinny. <laughs> I did not knit them to be this skinny. My, I cannot put these on anymore. They're way too small. And uh, this is superwash fiber, but they've just slowly over time you know, shrunk little by little until they're this size. Uh, I typically wash my super wash socks in the washing machine with the rest of my laundry. Um, my non super wash socks, I will wash by hand. Um, and I think for a while I was washing these by hand, but I think they ended up just because they're hand spun. They ended up in the washing machine a few times. And I think that's what pretty much did it. Uh, I don't really think hand washing socks really does the trick for me though. I want them to get a little more clean than they get just in a hand wash. So what I've started doing is um, I have a bin of hand knit socks and I'll wear them through. I'll wear, wear every single sock in the bin and I have like a separate little laundry basket for hand knit socks. And I know if you watch my last episode, you're like, <laughs> I thought you just threw all your laundry and you don't care about laundry. But yeah, I've, I'm I guess I'm starting to care a little bit. So I have a separate little laundry bag for all my hand knit socks. And once that's full and I've worn through all of them, then I do one load of laundry in my washing machine on like the delicate knit cycle, which I've never used before. I've like never used anything other than the regular <laughs> setting on my washing machine, but I thought I would try it. And it's been working out really good. Uh, these, I don't know if these went through that. I can't remember. Probably. I don't know why I'm even talking about this. I think I just got reminded of it. But I've only done it for the past um, probably few weeks now because today I'm about to do my second load of that style of laundry. So yeah, that's been working good. And I've been doing it with my um, 
super wash socks and my non super wash socks because I they're you're supposed to be able to wash non super wash stuff in a washing machine if it has a wool cycle and this is a delicate slash knit cycle so I don't really know <laughs> but they have come out fine I did it once and I crossed my fingers and my non super wash socks mostly came out fine my Mondum socks came out perfect they were like beautiful uh, I have a pair of hand spun socks that are bulky and the fiber was not super wash and they felt it a little bit but it was actually good because they were kind of huge to begin with like slipper style and now they fit just a little more snug so I'm happy with that so I think it's a little bit of a like iffy situation <laughs> but so far all my current socks that I have even the non super wash ones are coming out fine except for that one but they're okay so I don't know that's another little aside that's kind of fun I've been experimenting with that but anyway these have not survived and they're too small and the point of my whole story that is taking forever is that they fit Lucy except the foot is too long so they're obviously the leg is way too long but she kind of scrunches them down and it looks really cute um, but the foot is too long so now that they're felted they fit her and I'm just shortening the foot <laughs> so this is the sock that I'm working on this is a whip and what I did with this sock is I ripped out the foot probably to about here and then just re-knit the toe and the yarn is a little felty so it did get kind of sticky but that was okay so this is my new foot on these socks I just re-knit the toe to have a teeny tiny little foot that will fit my three-year-old and this I did like a week and a half ago I just haven't gotten around to getting a darning needle and doing the Kitchener stitch <laughs> so I just have to do that and then I still have to do the whole thing on this sock so that's my kind of uh, reinvention of these socks that is my work in progress for those and I think she's really gonna like them she loves and she's like wears those socks before I did this she would wear them around and her <laughs> the end of the foot would just kind of flop around and I think she's really gonna like wearing them like as a better fitting sock. And that's all my knitting works in progress. Um, moving on, I have some stuff to talk about including some acquisitions. One of them is a really big acquisition. Um, but first I'm gonna talk about the more regular acquisitions. So I, uh, bought some stuff from Maria of the Ninja Ch of Ninja Chickens and I'm pretty excited about it. So she does she usually does tea advent calendars and I've always wanted one of her tea advent calendars but I haven't gotten one this year. I saw that she was doing hot chocolate advent calendars so I jumped on it. I have one of those. I have not opened it yet. I'm not going to show you because it's just a box right now but I'm very excited for December 1st to start getting into uh, that. And this is also my first ever like small business advent calendar I'm very excited I also while I was on her Etsy shop got myself my very first sock blank and it's an eco printed sock blank uh, you probably know Maria from Ninja Chickens and have seen her do these things and I have been so obsessed with these eco printed sock blanks ever since I saw her start doing them and I've always wanted one and I finally got one and I'm very excited about it so this one is it's 100% BFL and it's dyed with Vitex indigo and printed with eucalyptus so I've never worked from a sock blank before and I can't wait to make these um, I have gone back and forth. I think I'm going to make them into socks, but I also thought make, about making it into a hat. But I think I'm going to do socks. Maybe these will be my Christmas socks. I don't know. They might be my Christmas socks. We'll see. So I'm very excited about this sock blank. And the next thing I bought was a drum carter. I bought a drum carter, which is a big tool that you use to make bats for spinning. And... I got a fancy kitty. It's actually a fancy kitten. Fancy Kitty is the brand and I first heard about Fancy Kitty a long time ago on the Knit Girls podcast. Leslie and Laura have a Fancy Kitty and they've talked about it in the past and I always thought if I ever got a drum carter I'm getting a Fancy Kitty for one because it's an amazing name 
And for two, it's a small company that makes all of their drum carters by hand, and they're quite inexpensive. They're much less expensive than the like the drum carters from the bigger companies like Louet and I don't know who else makes drum carters. I forgot. I did a lot of research, but it's already all gone. Um, so I've wanted a drum carter for a long time in general, but like the past few months I've been really, really, really wanting one and like really looking into them again. And, but I wasn't like ready to bite the bullet. It's a big purchase. Uh, and then I saw on Fancy Kitty's website, I like just checked again one day to look at them again. And they said that they, after like, I don't know, 20 years or something, I don't know, of not raising their prices, they're finally raising their prices like in a week from when I was looking and I was like, okay, I need to buy it right now. So I got it and it came in the mail and it's absolutely beautiful. And I love it so much. And I really want to show it off on the YouTube channel. I'm thinking if I do Vlogmas, Vlogmas that I'll like kind of give you a little tour of it. But I, and it's like a, it's a smaller drum carter. It's got an eight inch carding cloth and um, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I've made two baths so far. The first, I also bought a bunch of fiber. <laughs> I bought a bunch of Rambouillet from Lanis Lana, um, which is like a California, Nevada um, fiber producer, and they do all Rambouillet. It's really beautiful. I bought three different colors, and it's gorgeous. It's like the nicest fiber I've ever seen. Um, and I also found another farm, I think out of New York, that sells um, California Red and Cormo. So I got some fiber from them. And the first bath that I made, I've already spun up. And this was a bath that I made from California Red. So all the white that you see in here is the California Red. It's a white fiber. And all the green and yellow that you see in here is a bunch of stuff from my just spinning fiber stash. And if you remember my uh, fiber, uh, fiber in my mouth. If you remember my cardigan, uh, my Spark cardigan by Andrew Mowry, I used hand spun as the color work in that. And I used two braids of fiber that I plied together. And I took out all the colors that I didn't want. And those were the green from one braid and the yellow from the other braid. And I just took all of that fiber and carded it with the California red. And I got this and I spun it up. And it's pretty great. And this is like, um, I want to say it's like an Aran, maybe a bulky, probably like an Aran. And I just kind of did this like quick and dirty. I just like wanted to do it. So I did it. The bat was okay, but my second bat was better. <laughs> so this is my second bat that I just made a few days ago. And this one is like epic. I'm like so in love with this one. So this one is um, mostly Rambouille. I actually wrote it down. I don't have the percentages. I want to figure out how to make percentages. Math. It's 2.1 ounces of Rambouille and I did about half of a dark brown and half of like a lighter brown and 0.2 ounces of bio nylon which is a type of nylon that's just a more eco-friendly process of making um, instead of regular like plastic nylon. Uh, 0.3 ounces of a pink, a dyed pink mohair and 0.1 ounces of sari silk. And that's it. And these is, this is like my perfect bat. This is like my dream bat. This is like why I bought a drum carter. It's because I wanted this bat. <laughs> so I'm going to open it up for you slowly so that you can see all of it yes ah so that's it that's the whole bat and it's super fluffy and absolutely beautiful and it's it's just like perfect i want a whole sweater i want to make like five more baths like this and make a sweater um so I've been learning how to use my carter and I carded it all through just kind of in layers all the different things that I used and then I 
ran it through again. So once I took the bat off the carter, it was a little rough and I, it was still really beautiful, but it was a little like not quite this blended, just kind of chunky. And so what I did from there is I stripped off pieces like this and just kind of opened them up and ran them all through the carter again. And that process was super quick. And that second run through gave me like this really even fluffy, just luxurious thing. And I'm so into it. I cannot wait to spin this. I'm going to get this on my spinning wheel like right now, like right, quite, right, quite right now. I'm so excited. I can't talk. So yeah, that's my new thing. That's my new project is this drum carter. And I can't wait to experiment more with the fibers that I got. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm really into it. I love it. And I've been like playing with this. I've been like playing with it and squishing it, which is kind of messing it up a little bit, but it's okay. I'm very excited about this. And I'm glad I wrote it down because I think I can recreate it and maybe make more. I don't know, we'll see. It's great. I'm so excited. I'm having so much fun with this drum carter. It's out of my garage and yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say about it. It's great. It's fun. I love it. Okay. I guess that's it. I think this has been a pretty long episode. So I think I'm going to cut myself off there. I'm very happy that my baby slept through the whole thing. It's actually kind of late. I should probably wake him up. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate you being here. Um, I love spending time with you and I know I don't get to do this, these videos as frequently as I used to before my second baby was born, but every time I do get a chance to sit down with the camera, it's just so much fun. It makes me so happy to talk about everything I'm working on, share it with all of you, and hopefully um, in the comments below or through Instagram or whatever through your own videos, you get to share what you're working on with me. So thank you for being here. Is there anything else? Is that it? Is that everything? Maybe I'll see you in Vlogmas. I kind of hope so. I hope to see you in Vlogmas. Have a happy rest of November. And if you liked the video, <laughs> please do feel free to like and subscribe. I would appreciate that very much. Um, if you're interested in supporting me or the podcast, you can check out the links below for my Patreon, my Ko-Fi, and uh, memberships to this channel. Also, keep an eye out on Instagram for my little de-stash of all the stuff that I want to give away. Okay. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? That's it. Okay. Have fun. And I'm not going to say it. <laughs> uh, tell me something fun below in a comment. Tell me, tell me something interesting about you. <gasps> tell me something about you in the comments. If you've been here this long, I would love to hear. I would love to hear anything you want to share with me about you. Um, you know, something that you're interested in, something that you're working on, anything. Anything you want to tell me. I would love for you to share with me. And the other commenters. So, I will see you next time. And I hope you have a fabulous day.